in today's video we are going to solve some of the most commonly asked important questions that are being asked for the data analyst and business analyst role at Misho. So let's get started. The very first question is you're given a query below that returns more rows than expected. Now you have to identify the logical error and provide a corrective version of the query. So here is the original query that you have been given. Now guys I would suggest you pause the video here and take a look at the query and if in case you are able to identify the error well and good and if in case you are not able to identify the error please resume the video for the solution. So, so guys uh, if you see the query the issue with this query is the incorrect use of the OR condition since you have been said that the result uh, returns more rows than expected. So in this case what happens is the OR operator cause, causes the query to return more rows than expected because it retrieves all the employees with a salary greater than 50,000 or all the employees in department ID is equals to 10 regardless of their salary. So there are two separate conditions being applied independently that is causing to return more rows than expected. So our corrected version of the query would actually replace the OR condition with the AND condition. So here will be our corrected query where we are just going to retrieve the employee ID, first name, last name, uh, just like uh, the original query from the employees table. And what we have changed here is we have only changed the OR condition to AND condition. So this will ensure that the result will only contain employee from the department ID 10 and the employees that are having salary greater than 50,000 as well. So that's, that's what will be preventing extra rows from being returned. So that's about the first question guys. Now let's move on to the second question. So the second question is the query returns an empty result set despite having matching records. So you're given query. So this is the query that you have been given. Again, you can pause the video here if you want to try for the solution. And if in case you couldn't, please resume the video for the solution. So what this query gives you is, so as according to the question, the query returns an empty result set despite having matching records in both the tables. So this happens due to a column name mismatch in the join condition. So as you can see here, in the employees table, the column name is named department ID, while in the departments table, the column name is named DEPT underscore ID, that is DEPT ID. So since column names are different, the on condition does not find any matches resulting in an empty set. So to fix this query, we will be matching the columns here. The department ID as well from the employees table and the department ID from the department table. So that's how uh, your corrected query would look like. Now coming to the third question. So the query below throws an error related to the group by clause. Now you have to identify the issue and correct the query here. So this is your query. Now guys, if you clearly see the query here, the issue is that the department ID column is not aggregated or grouped. So to fix this, you will have to do a group by clause because what you have done is here you have uh, applied aggregation functions like average of salary, max of salary. But in this case, you can see that you have not applied group by, group by clause on the department ID which is actually required. So there is one thing you, you will have to note that whenever you're using aggregation functions like average or max or min or anything, then you will have to include group by for, for non-aggregated columns. So this is how your corrected query would look like. So in this case, what we have done is we have simply applied the group by clause on the non-aggregated column, which is department ID here. So uh, there is one tip to note that whenever using aggregation functions like average or max, include group by for non-aggregated columns. Now coming to the fourth question, you have been given the orders table and in the orders table, the columns are the customer ID, the order ID, order date and order status, where order status has been mentioned yes and no. Now you have to calculate the number of customers who are retained. Now retention is calculated such that the number of days difference between the first two successful purchases made by the customer should be less than 30. Now coming to the solution guys, you can see that to calculate the customer retention, what we have to do is we, we just need to identify customers who made two consecutive successful purchases within 30 days of each other. So first we have to filter the orders table to only include successful purchases such that the order status has to be yes, right? 
then we will be using the lag window function to retrieve the previous order date for each customer. So guys, customers with a gap of less than 30 days between their first two successful purchases are counted as retained as we already discussed. Now let's just assume a table. Let's say uh, this is the table customer ID, order ID, order date and order status. So as we discussed, we will be using the lag window function to retrieve the previous order date for each customer. Then we will just calculate the difference in days between the current and the previous success successful purchase using date diff function. So finally, we will be able to count the unit customers who meet the retention condition. So here in this case, if you see in, the, in this table, there are three customer IDs, one, two, and three. So if you see for the customer ID one, the first purchase was made on uh, 5th of January, 2023. Now the second purchase was made on 20th of January uh, 2023. So as you can see the difference in days is like 15 days. The first purchase was in 5th and the second purchase was on 20th. So the difference between the first and second purchase is like 15 days. And since uh, this is less than 30, so as we can say that this customer is retained. Now coming to the second customer here, the first purchase has been made on uh, 10th of February. And the second purchase has been made on 15th of April. So the difference between the days is coming out to be around 64 days around. So as you can see, the 64 is like greater than 30. So in this case, the customer is not retained. retained. Now coming to the customer ID 3, we can say that the first purchase has been made on 1st of March 2023. And the second purchase has been made on 20th of March 2023. So it's like the difference is around um, 19 days only. So in this case, the customer is retained. So that's how we are actually find whether the customer is retained or not. So coming to the solution, here, what we will be doing is we will first create a CTE to retrieve the consecutive purchases and then then we will actually just count the number of customers who are retained by applying the date diff condition where you know the order date and the previous previous order date uh, difference between them should be less than 30. So that's how we are going to apply. So this would be your final answer. So here what we have done is we have created a CT which is purchase CT. The CT name is purchase CT. And here we have used use the lag window function to just retrieve the previous order date for each customer. And here it has to be the order status has to be yes because it, it has to be a successful order as mentioned in the question. And then after creating a CT, we are just counting the customer IDs that is we are just counting the number of retained customers and we are just applying a, a condition that is the uh, date difference between the order date and the previous order date should be uh, less than 30 days. So that's how we are just calculating the result. Now coming to the next question. Uh, the next question is you just have to calculate the three month moving average of sales revenue for each month. So this is also one of the most important, most commonly asked question. So let's assume a table guys. Sometimes the interviewer uh, does not give you the table. You have to assume it by yourself. So uh, that's why I'm just giving you an idea like just assume the table. So in this case, you have just assumed you have just assumed that the table has three columns, order ID, order date and sales. So since you, we just need to calculate the three month of moving average of sales revenue for each month. So our output should look something like this. You should be having the month and you should be having the moving average of sales. Now the question is uh, how would you do that? So guys in this case uh, you will have to group the sales data by month to organize the revenue chronologically. Then you will have to use the average window function to calculate the average sales over the current and the previous two months. And then you can just apply the window framing that is rows between to include the previous two rows and the current row just like creating a rolling average. And then you can just display the monthly moving average that will help you to you know identify the sale trends over time. So your uh, final query would look something like this. So in this case what we have done is we have first actually formatted our date in the form of month. Then we have just applied the window function that is average window function over here to just calculate the average sales over the current and the previous two months. And, and to do that, we have, uh, as I discussed, we will have to do a window framing that is rows between two preceding and the current row. And here it's just calculating us the moving average. And then we have applied the round function here just to make sure that we are rounding it off to integers. And then, yeah, it has just done order by month to make sure that uh, we are, our months have been ordered uh, in the ascending order. So, yeah, that's about the final query, guys. I hope you're clear with the solution. 
Now coming to the next question is, the sixth question is, you just need to find the line number where there is error in the below code. Now here is the query that you have been given. You can take a view at the query here and you can see what, what is the, actually the error. So if you clearly see guys uh, what the error is, uh, this is not the exact syntax. So the syntax is like select from and then we actually apply where condition and then group by condition and then the order by condition. So in this case, the where clause is incorrectly placed after the order by clause. To fix this issue, we will just move the where clause before group by clause. So that is actual place of the where clause here. So this is our corrected query. Okay. Now coming to the seventh question which is again one of the most important and most commonly asked question that you have to rank the employees by salary within each department so in this case let's assume one table of the employee let's consider we have three columns that is employee id department and the respective salaries now uh, we have three departments here hr department it department and the sales department and we have to rank the salaries of the employees within each department now uh, your output should look something like this so here in this case what we have done is we have we have added two more rows one is the rank row and one is the dense rank row so you can there are two window functions that you can apply to rank to find the rank so here the one is the rank function and one another one is the dense rank function so guys so you will be have to definitely apply the partition by clause on the department column since you have to rank the employees by salary within each department so what partition by department will do is it will just divide the row into groups based on the each department. So each department would be ranked separately. And also since you want to rank the employee, so definitely the first rank should be given to the employee having the highest salary. So you will be applying order by salary descending. So what it will help you is it will just uh, rank the employees by salary in the descending order within each department. And there are two options, you can apply either, either rank function or the dense rank function. Here in this case, I'm applying both to help you understand the difference between both. So what rank function does is rank function assigns the same rank to employees with equal salary. And, and what happens is the gaps appear in the ranking when there are ties. But uh, the dense rank function works very appropriately. What it does is it assigns the same rank for equal salaries. However, it does not leave uh, gaps in the ranking sequence. So that is something most ideally accepted. So let's take the example of the HR department here. So what happens with the HR department is uh, here you can see the employee ID 102 and employee ID 103. They both are having the same salary that is 75,000. Now, what, what rank function is giving is, it is giving first rank. Again, the dense rank function is also giving the same rank to both. Now, the second one, which is uh, actually 60,000, it should be given second rank, right? Because uh, the first rank has been given to this. But what rank function is giving is, it is giving third rank. So, it has actually skipped the second rank, which is not ideally accepted. So, in this case, the dense rank function is working appropriately. What it is doing is it is giving second rank to the employee ID 101, which is actually in, at the second place and whose salary is 60,000. So uh, we can we can see the difference that dense rank function does not skip ranks while rank function skips the ranks. So that's the difference. Coming to the solution approach, as we already discussed, uh, here we will have to apply the rank or the dance rank function. And we will have to do partition by with department ID, order by salary descending order. If we want to show the employees having highest salary to be, uh, to be at the uh, first rank, something like that. So here is how your solution would look like. So guys, there is one thing uh, to note that is if you have been asked to find the second highest or the third highest salary within each department, which is actually commonly asked. Also, the interviewer can also ask you to find the second highest or the third highest salary within each department. So what we have to do is, uh, what we have to do in this case is we can just create, we can just wrap this query in a CTE, which is a common table expression. And then you can just apply a simple where condition and you can just filter on the rank or the dense rank column so that will help you filter uh, filter the second highest or the third highest salary within each department now coming to the next question 
you will have to find the line number where there is error in the below code so the code is given like this so guys if you see here again the error that you will be as we have already discussed this that non aggregated columns must come in the group by clause now here you can see that this column has been aggregated but this column is non aggregated and this column is non aggregated so customer name and order date will also come in the group by clause so the fi final query would look something like this so here the customer id that was already there the customer name and order date was actually missing that is what we have added in the corrected query now coming to the ninth question you have to find all the products containing chair so guys this is one of the most easiest uh, question so this can be done using like operator so this is your final query so you you can simply find the product name from product table you just assuming the table names here where product name like and here we have to write it something like this so, so that's that's all for this video guys that's that's it for today's sql interview preparation for uh, me show business analyst or data analyst role so i hope these queries and solutions will help you feel more, more confident for your next interview if you found this video helpful give it give it a thumbs up subscribe for more sql tips and tutorials thank you